Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is basically reviewing Medicaid. Um, many of you have asked me to do this video, so I'm sorry it's taken me so long, but I've basically gone through their best sellers and I'm going to tell you whether or not they are suitable for skin of color. So I do have certain criteria. Number one, ingredients need to be in the therapeutic index. That means that you know, don't tell me that there's an ingredient that's 0.001% and then put it as a heading of that product and, you know, tell me it works because it doesn't. You need to have ingredients in specific, uh, at specific percentages. That's not to say that everything needs to be at 10%, 20%. Some things work best at less than a percent. And that's what I'm here for is basically to tell you which products are in the therapeutic index and which ones aren't. The second criteria for me is that the product is safe. That means no denatured alcohol, which can dry the skin because skin of color has less ceramides in our skin already. Our skin already dries faster than Caucasian skin. And no fragrance because fragrance is the number one cause of contact dermatitis, which I'm sure you all know by now and no essential oils because they sensitize the skin. So first of all, let's make sure I'm not making any mistakes. And then the second thing I move on to is how effective the product is. So what are the positives of the product and do they have any tyrosinase inhibitors? For us, that is a key ingredient because hyperpigmentation is a big issue for a lot of us and dull skin with age is also another issue. So actually tyrosinase inhibitors just should be part of our skincare full stop from 20 years old onwards. Okay, so let's start off with Crystal Retinal 1. That's their first product. Uh, so it was interesting because they had no inky on their website. So inky is the ingredients list on the website. So I had to go to another website, but it did say no artificial fragrance. However, it contains cumarin, which is fragrance. So they're probably getting it from an essential oil, for example, and they're saying it's not artificial fragrance, but it's still fragrance and it still leads to contact dermatitis. So this is the sort of marketing that I want you to be aware of is when someone says no added fragrance or no artificial fragrance. Sometimes it even says no fragrance and then you see an inky it contains fragrance and if they're doing it because it's a marketing ploy, they're hoping that you're gonna purchase based on the headline thing, no artificial fragrance. And honestly, if I didn't have time to read, I'd just assume that, you know, there's no fragrance in it because there's no artificial fragrance. But that's not the case. And that's the reason for this channel is just so that you guys know exactly what you're buying and what you're putting on your skin. This particular product also contains isosteric acid, which is five out of five on the comedogenic scale. So I would avoid this if you have acne prone skin or oily skin. It's a shame because some of the other ingredients are excellent. Uh, so for example, the third ingredient here is glycerin, the 10th ingredient is vitamin E, which I love, and the 12th ingredient is squalene. What I would say is if they made a fragrance-free version of this product, then I would approve it. It's £39. It is expensive. Retinaldehyde is expensive. So it's just something to be aware of. So for example, I did ask you guys. So when I made the <clears throat> antioxidant power serum, in here I put in retinol palmitate. That is the least irritating form of vitamin A. But my favorite form of vitamin A is actually retinaldehyde. It's actually very expensive. And it would mean that I'd have to increase the price of this from 18 pounds up to about 25 pounds. Um, maybe even a bit more because retinaldehyde is that expensive. I would love to ask you guys, do you want me to make your second version of the antioxidant serum for next year? that contains retinaldehyde in it. Can you write it down below? And if you would be happy with the price increase, or if you'd rather had a separate line altogether. So we kept the antioxidant power serum, but we also kept, we added one that had retinaldehyde in it too. So you get the option. Can you write down below what you want? And I will, you know, make that happen for you. Right, moving on to the next product, which is the Daily Radiance Vitamin C. I love that the second ingredient here is tetrahexyl decalascorbate, literally my favorite fat soluble vitamin C because it penetrates into to the dermis to stimulate collagen. I love it and I use it in, in even in our um, antioxidant power serum. Um, plus, I love that this particular product is hydrating because they've got glycerin in it. However, they then just went completely off the rails because then they added citrus, bergomia, fruit oil. They added pelargonium, flower oil, limonene, geraniol, linalool, citronella, and citral. These, this product is loaded with essential oils and fragrance. Please avoid this product. It is just not worth it. Moving on to the next product, which is Medicaid Advanced Night Restore. So the first ingredient is water, which means it's gonna be more of a serum. It's gonna be a, or a thinner cream. The second ingredient here is squalene, which is an emollient and it has ceramides in it. So, you know, so far I'm loving it. But then they added geraniol, limonene, linalool, lavendula, which is skin sanitizer. So these are all fragrances. 
plus this really should be an airless packaging um, or at least um, minimal oxygen around it because ceramides are unstable. So on this one, I would have to say avoid. Moving on to the next one is C-Tetra. So I was excited by the headline because it contains tetrahexyl decalascorbate, which you know I absolutely love. The first ingredient here is Simenzia oil. It's two out of five on the comedogenic scale. I love it, but I wouldn't recommend it for acne. It does contain silicones, which I love, tetrahexyl decalascorbate, of course, and a vitamin E, both ingredients I love. They did try to stabilize it because they they have two uh, antioxidant serums, but really you would want a group of three or more. Um, and vitamin E isn't the most powerful antioxidant. It, it could be a better formula because product can be oxygenated. And this is not in an airless pump, so it has oxygen around it. So I don't even know how effective the antioxidants are going to be because they get oxygenated in oxygen. Um, plus they added limonene, citral, linalool and geraniol. These are all fragrances. So for me, it's such a shame. If they put this honestly in the right packaging, airless pump, uh, maybe added two more antioxidants and deleted <laughs> the fragrance, it would be a doctor approved product. But as it is, I would avoid it. Moving on to the next one, which is Hydrate B5 Intense. So the third ingredient here is Panthenol, which is an anti-inflammatory. The fourth ingredient is Glycerin, which is a humectant, a water magnet. The fifth ingredient is Sodium Hyaluronate, which is also a water magnet. So I'm loving it so far. And it's NAF safe, meaning no fragrance. Like at this point, I'm thinking a few, but it's 55 pounds. So the cost benefit of this product doesn't really add up to me. It's basically, an anti-inflammatory humectant. I personally wouldn't spend 55 pounds on this and I'd rather buy the ordinary um, hyaluronic acid. In fact, I've made a whole video for you on hyaluronic acid serums that I love for skin of color. And I just would never spend 55 pounds on, on this. The reason is for us, we need so many actives on our skin that if you put one full layer just on humectants, what about all the other ingredients we need? We need ceramides, we need peptides, we need um, tyrosinase inhibitors, we need anti-inflammatories. There's so much more that we need for our skin. We need niacinamide. Where is that all gonna happen if one full layer is just on humectants and then actually the second and third layers don't really penetrate the skin as effectively? And especially for 55 pounds, I uh, really you know, just this one, you can buy it if you want, but it's you know wouldn't be wouldn't be my favorite. Moving on to the next one, which is liquid peptides. I love that it's NAF safe, so that's excellent. The second ingredient here is glycerin. Uh, it does contain anti-inflammatories and humectants, which I love. Um, it is expensive, it's 45 pounds, but I would recommend this particular product to you. I've just done a video just now on peptides and actually there aren't enough good peptide products available on the market for you, but this one I like and I would recommend. Okay, so moving on to the next product is the Advanced Day Ultimate Protect SPF 50. It's 59 pounds for 50 mils. That's very expensive. It does contain PA4 pluses, which I like. Um, it is a chemical sunscreen, so you should know that. I do tend to prefer mineral sunscreens for skin of color because it's anti-inflammatory. And for us, inflammation equals hyperpigmentation. So I'm constantly looking to minimize inflammation on our skin. Um, plus uh, mineral sunscreen doesn't enter the bloodstream, whereas chemical sunscreen does. In addition, they added perfume, limonene, linalool, and citral. These are all fragrances, and so for that reason, it would be a no. The idea of putting fragrance product onto the skin and then going out into the sun where UV is hitting the skin, it would be a mistake. You know, if you're gonna wear fragrance products, you would wanna do it not when UV is hitting the face. Okay, so moving on to the last product, which is Dress and Glow, uh, PHA tonic with enzyme activator. I was nervous when I thought it was an enzyme exfoliator because that's my least favorite exfoliator for skin of color, um, but actually it's not. Um, they've used PHAs, which I love, 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 especially for sensitive skin. It basically for, it behaves like an AHA, so exfoliates the skin, but it's much larger molecule, so it doesn't penetrate the skin or irritate the skin. So I love it and I'd recommend it, and it's very hydrating. Um, in fact, I use use PHAs in our body exfoliator balm that I will be manufacturing next year for you. Um, but it's one that I would recommend. And PHAs just generally in products that you purchase from now on, I love it um, as part of your exfoliating routine. If you want to learn more about ingredients that are suitable for skin of color, please do purchase your Skin Revolution book uh, from Amazon. It's been, this is a book that I wrote and published with HarperCollins. 
it goes through everything you need to know for skin of color. Um, plus you can uh, join our Facebook group, which is a private Facebook group called Dr. Vsop Family. Please do follow us here on YouTube and hit that subscribe button. I am in the comment section for one hour. Please do follow us on Instagram. I've got two accounts, Skincare by Dr. V and Dr. Vita Ratan. Also on TikTok, which is also Dr. Vita Ratan too. If you want to shop any of the products that have been formulated specifically for skin of color, you can do. The link is down below. It's Skincare by Dr. V. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.